All right, welcome to uh, Mahindra Research Valley, our hub of innovation and R&D. You know that uh, when we call you to MRV, it's always to show you something very exciting, something path-breaking, something that uh, I believe will not only make Mahindra proud, but India proud in terms of bringing new technologies in a product. Last time, I think, when uh, we had a major uh, conference here was for the launch of uh, Novo, where we had shown you all kinds of things with tractor lifting tractor. Uh, this time we have something very different. Though it's not a product launch, but I believe it's a very important milestone in our journey. And in a sense, it brings together many different thrust areas that Mahindra has. The first one is Make in India. And you might wonder what is Make in India got to do with driverless tractor? But I have always said that for India to really succeed as a manufacturing nation, we must have our own technology, our own innovation, our own uh, IPR. And when we do cutting edge technology like this and take it globally, I think India gets noticed in terms of what we can do. The whole thrust on technology and innovation that we have tried to do with the last three launches that we have had in tractor, the Novo, the Uvo, the Jivo, Things that we're doing electric vehicle, for example, uh, which we believe is again cutting edge for a emerging market like, like, like India. Uh, the things that we've done with DigiSense, which we launched uh, uh, last year, uh, the, cut, the connected tractor, uh, first time ever in India. And today we have the driverless tractor. It also is bringing together a thrust on using technology to bring farmers prosperity. And we have always believed that in Indian farmers, can perhaps be much better off if we can use technology in farming practices, increase productivity, reduce input cost, uh, make less disease or, 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 or reduce the instances of diseases, and all of that to really make our farmers prosper using technology. The third thrust that we have is on farming 3.0, and we have talked about that recently on how we want to bring in uh, precision farming smart machinery, um, connected tractor, digital technology, custom hiring into farming to transform Indian farming in the next five to seven years and take it to the level where the global farming is. And the, finally, the driverless technology. Many of you have asked us many times on is Mahindra working on driverless car? And we have always said no. To us, the more important, the more relevant thing in India is a driverless tractor. Because we are all aware of uh, the drudgery of farming, how the next generation of farmers does not want to get into farming, how the farm labor uh, is in short supply, and therefore we believe the driverless tractor perhaps would revolutionize farming in India a lot faster than driverless car can. And that's the reason we have worked on that technology, and today we are very proud to present to you the first ever demonstration showcasing of a driverless tractor in India by any company. Uh, you will uh, see some presentation here, and then you will go and see the demo, and then you will come back here for, for, for wrap-up. So with that, I uh, invite uh, Subo, uh, our uh, uh, National Head of Sales and Marketing, uh, to come and make a small presentation, followed by Arvind Bharadwaz, uh, who is from MRV, who will talk about all the technology detail, and then we'll come back for question and answer. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Goenka. A very warm welcome to the Mahindra Research Valley. This is an opportunity for us to showcase something disruptive in the farm arena. A technology that will bring forth higher productivity, improve yields, reduce cost, and also the possibility of ease of comfort while doing farming including reduction of any hazards that a farmer may encounter. I might dare say that it might have the possibility of also changing the way food is produced in this country. So let me just start off by putting two or three important elements to set the context of Indian agriculture. The first one is obvious, and we've been plagued with this for quite some time, which is the low productivity levels. The other facet that besets us over the last many years we've witnessed that a lot of rural labor 
is actually migrating towards non-farm opportunities, increasing the cost of operations when you need it the most. And the third element is the comparative yields that you have across crop varieties between India, China, and the rest of the world. The second element is the fact that farm operations are all time critical, which means from the harvest of the previous crop to the ability of the farmer to quickly grow the crop means that he has to take out all the remnants of the previous crop, till the land, pulverize it, level it, and make it ready for the onset of rainfall to happen. All of that has to be done within the time window that is available. At times, rain comes in early, or at times, it happens later. The second facet that you would see typically in the case of grape farmers is the fact that when rainfall happens, the humidity that accompanies it results in quick infestation of fungal disease, which can have a deleterious impact in terms of productivity and yield and completely damage farmers' income. And you have to ensure that spraying is done each time rain happens. We were certain that in a classic grape operation, the farmer has to do about 50 times this particular type of spraying. The third category is that of somebody who is growing sugarcane. The harvesting of sugarcane is extremely time critical because the quantum of sugar that is available in the cane reduces dramatically over time, resulting in low remuneration for farmers. Having set this context, I'll just swing over to something which we call Farming 3.0 by setting the context of the fact that Indian agriculture has undergone many transformations since independence. Between the period 1947 and 1966, 70% of the livelihood of the Indian populace dependent on farming, and roughly about 50% of the national income came from there. In this period, the government spent more time and effort in land reform and irrigation. Thereafter, everybody knows that with the advent of better quality seeds, fertilizers, and farm inputs, we had something called the Green Revolution, which in effect helped us to attain food sufficiency. Today, we are at an inflection point where we strongly believe that it will be the technology that will be driving the next ascendancy in the way farming is done in this country. Having said that, we are at a time where we are bringing this technology of driverless tractor, which, when pre-programmed with certain specific inputs for crop types, soil types, land space, acreage, area, etc., will be able to deliver something spectacular in terms of productivity, yield, cost reductions, and so on and so forth. It is time now for me to call upon the Chief Technology Officer, Farm Equipment Sector, Arvind Bhardwaj, to expound on the driverless technology. Thank you, Shubho. So, actually, Shubho mentioned in detail in terms of setting the context of how technology can make an impact for our farmers, and also how it is actually impacting them in terms of increasing the productivity and efficiency. Why are you uh, talking about this technology here? For most of us here in India, a tractor is pretty much a mechanical machine which is there, uh, you know, working in the field. But globally, over the past two decades, there has been a convergence of technologies, not just mechanical, it is mechanical, electronic, electronics, computer science, and communication, and dare I say even space technology in terms of the satellite imagery and everything, that has all come into the farm. So to that extent, we have an opportunity actually to stitch it together and create a real value proposition to a customer to improve their productivity in the farm. The building blocks which we actually have in the uh, driverless tractor technology that we are putting together is essentially typically what you could know in terms of the auto side, the X by wire technologies, whether it is shift by wire, manifested as an automatic transmission, drive by wire, which is electronic controls of the engine, brake by wire, which is very important for obstacle detection, and to stitch it all together is a tractor master controller, which essentially controls not just the tractor, but also the implements together, and also what we talked about in the precision farming, any system that is uh, sensors or controls that is planted on the farm.
So the hub of this, the way we went about designing this architecture, is to define the electronic and electrical architecture, which defines the tractor, implement, and the farm for the future. So if you are able to actually make the tractor communicate, all the issues communicate inside the tractor in the right fashion, and also communicate with the implements to make it smarter, and take the data, which is available through the sensors in the field, several decisions in terms of the farming operations can be done through this uh, technology. The way we put together is essentially a phase-wise approach of increasing levels of autonomy. At the first stage, what we define is essentially driver on seat. So we call it as a hands-free operation. A lot of safety features are built into it. Uh, typical features which you are actually looking at a driver on seat or a hands-free operation is auto shear, auto headland turn, and skip passing, and implement lift and uh, lift up and down. So this will be uh, described in detail when uh, Shubo goes through the application of this technology in a tractor. And you'll also see in the demo, uh, which we have organized for you in the farm later on. As we keep going on into the quasi-driverless, where he was talking about the vineyards and other typical applications, how can you actually get a driver off the seat and get pre-programmed parts which can go into the field and do, do the operations? And this essentially goes to the final stage of a fully driverless. We have also organized for a concept, full driverless tractor technology demo today organized for you. So, But this is something which, as we keep working on, we'll be able to put all these building blocks and get the customer feedback and try to give this as a plug and play technology as per the requirement of the customer. The other thing which uh, we talked about is DigiSense. This is a connected like a tractor platform that was launched uh, last year. This is the first level of digitization that has gone into the tractor. And this is quite a powerful tool and element if we can actually get the connected tractor technology married with the driverless technology. With this, what you'll be enabled, is enabled to do is programmable operations, which can be either done through a tablet or remotely over the phone. This can essentially look, uh, you know, manifest itself as a programmable stop or a star start. And if you are taking forward into the precision farming technology arena, you can actually look at a lot of the data that is being collected in the farm, both from the farm, from the implement, and from the tractor, get it back into the cloud, do all the analytics, and it can per, you know, serve as an advisory and also for action that the farmer needs to take at the right time, at the right place. It's essentially giving the farmer the right set of information to carry out his activities. So if you're looking at the architecture of what you're putting together in terms of technology elements, we have created through this architecture a very versatile platform. So we are able to get this and scale it up across all our power ranges of our tractors for multiple applications. And also what we are also looking at specific for Indian condition in terms of the farm practices. How can it be adaptable? Uh, very specific Indian condition wetland applications for the puddling. So how can you actually use this technology which can go across farm applications? And we are also looking at, at a solution. As I mentioned before, it is not just a tractor driverless technology. It is looking at getting all the tractor implements and the ecosystem integrated and providing a solution for the farmer to improve his product, uh, productivity or yield maximization. As I mentioned earlier, when this driver te technology is married to the connected vehicle technology, it actually gives you a very, very powerful value proposition to the customer. You can have programmable options, like uh, some features which will be mentioned, uh, will we'll describe in detail by uh, Shobo later on in the farm, like geofence lock, and other things, you can actually program these features into the tractor. And it also gets a control offline. So the farmer will be able to program it, as I mentioned earlier, either through the tablet or through the mobile application, which is quite ubiquitous all over the country now. So looking at what we are offering here as a first uh, you know, uh, concept here is to create a solution coupling uh, driverless with connected vehicle technology, which has immense potential and with the pace at which the technology is going on, this will essentially play a very, very major role in realizing our dream of uh, improving the productivity of the farmer. I will uh, request Shubo to essentially talk about how these technologies which I talked about is manifesting itself in the farm. Over to Shubo. Thanks a lot, Arvind, for bringing to life how this technology operates. In this section, I will take you across to some crop types and farms across the country and how farming is classically done 
and what it would mean if we were to have this technology available to our farmers. The first one is that of a farm in Madhya Pradesh. Incidentally, Madhya Pradesh produces the highest quantum of soybean in the country. And this is a representation of field in Madhya Pradesh. You could actually argue that this is the way people would plant soybean, which means it has been randomly seeded, and soybean is actually competing with weeds around. If you were to look at the best agronomy practice in this, one would have imagined that the farmer would have put it along a straight line path, because that would allow a farmer to do subsequent operations of whether it is herbicide, pesticide, and doing all of the harvest and so on and so forth in future. Having not done that, you see a situation of stunted growth because plants are competing with other varieties of weeds in order to be able to grow. I'm going to take you from here in MP all the way to Bead District, a location called Ambe Jogai, and take you to a farmer who's attempted something interesting. Here, the farmer drove the tractor while planting almost along a straight line. But imagine a situation that the land that he was putting the tractor to use had a slope. It had a gradient. It had unevenness. And therefore, it developed a slight bend. But having said that, look at the difference that a simple aspect of planting along straight line has improved the quality of the germination of the crop by itself. And if we had a tractor which was possibly able to plant along straight line, this is an ideal scenario that you would see. Vigorous growth of crop, higher quality and size of the soy pod, and therefore better throughput, yield, and an improved productive farm for which the farmer is likely to get better remuneration. This is a case of planting simply between one end of the field to the other end in rows along a straight line, irrespective of the gradient, if it was possible. Let's look at another situation. This is about a potato farm. The humble, ubiquitous potato, which is eaten across the country, down south here in form of masala dosa, or in, a in form of a samosa in the north. But imagine a situation of how do farmers grow potatoes. Typically, you have ridges and furrows that they build. On the ridge is you plant a seed potato, and thereafter use the tractor for herbicide, pesticide operation. You also cover the roots in case they were exposed off the ridges by using the tractor, and finally harvesting the potato by cutting it on the ridges in a correct form. What if this was not a straight line? You would actually have to veer the tractor and try and avoid damage to the crop while you were protecting the crop. And at the time of harvest, it is highly likely that you would cut the potato, which is ripe, at the ridges itself. However, if you had a tractor to do this job, it would have done that efficiently in case we had the technology available and showcase to you how this will all work. I'm taking you across to grape farms. Both potato and grapes are row crops which are spaced out very narrowly. In case of potato, the tractor would have to turn in very small radii and therefore very challenging for the farmer. In this case, while they have to turn in small and tight radius, you can see some fumes behind. As I mentioned earlier, each time rain happens, there is a chance of humidity causing fungal infection to the crop. And the farmer has to go up in the field each time and make sure that it protects the crop by spraying. Spray is hazardous, hazardous chemicals. And in a field of this nature, classically during the rainy season, approximately 50 times spraying is done. And it causes damage to the person who's actually operating the tractor. Let me now showcase to you, with these three examples, what are the capabilities that we are bringing to the table? The first one is that of auto steer, which means that you are able to hold the steering of the tractor along a straight line path, A to B, in a row, in a farm, irrespective of the slope or the gradient that you are actually traversing. 
as I mentioned earlier in the examples that I took in form of soybean or potato or for example any other variety of row crop this would actually mean immense value not just in terms of planting but also in terms of how the crop grows and you protect the crop and you harvest it let's come to the next one before we go there let me just take you an animation of how this operates from a to b point so you saw the tractor moving along a straight line path Having done this, you would imagine a plot of land, and the tractor is traveling from point A to point B. It encounters the end of the plot, and it has to traverse and orient itself to the next row, which is called the auto headland turn, which means it does it automatically. And this is a very interesting piece that a farmer would have and reduce his drudgery to be able to do multiple operations at the same time while driving the tractor. Having done this, we see how this piece operates. This is a pre-programmed tractor that went from one to the other and took a very easy headland turn at the end of each row. Having seen this animation, tractors are classically fitted with implements. And these implements, which typically plow, till, or pulverize the land, need to be lifted up at the end of a row and dropped at the time of entering the next adjacent row. If we had a tractor that was capable of addressing all of this in continuous operation, it would reduce the drudgery and the time that is taken and also be able to therefore use the entire plot of land in one pass. I'm going to amplify this with this little example. Here goes a tractor, at the end of the row, what does it do? It lifts the implement. And as the tractor rotates back, it drops the implement and therefore ensures that is 100% coverage of the field. If the person was doing this manually, multiple operations being tried at all at the same time requires extreme amount of skill and you're highly likely to miss out on specific areas of the plot of land. Then there is this whole aspect of what is called skip passing. As I mentioned in case of grapes, the row to row spacing is very narrow. So what do you do? You have to turn very tight. In case of potatoes, the row to row spacing is very narrow. You have to turn tight. What if you had the possibility of using a tractor that actually takes every alternate row and then comes back across the next set of rows, which means that you traverse along odd rows and come back across even rows, which will protect the equipment and also be able to do justice to the job that you are doing in order to farm the land. This also reduces the risk of wear and tear of tires because the wheel swivels around at one place in the manual operation that we are currently engaged in doing. See the skip pass. It moves from one to row number three. And from row number three, it'll move on to row number five and complete the operation in the reverse direction by traversing the even rows. Having done this, what if in your farmland you encounter an obstacle? And if the tractor has the capability of detecting it and then avoiding it, wouldn't be interesting. Yes, it would be. We have the capability for the tractor to be able to deliver this. Let's watch how does this go. So there it stops in front of the obstacle. It is also possible if you were to operate this remotely on a tab, you can actually make the tractor also to veer around the obstacle and continue the operation. As was mentioned earlier, that if the farmland is the Lakshman Rekha, the periphery is the Lakshman Rekha, in literal sense, our tractor is equipped 
with the knowledge that it will not cross the Lakshman Rekha in form of what is called a geofence lock. And the tractor is equipped to do all of this. And similarly, in case you had to stop the tractor for some emergency, the engine can be stalled at that point in time. So both of these are interesting protective features that we will see in the animation here. There it is. And the tractor stalls within the fence or the perimeter of the land space that is available. So let me just finally capture what are the overall benefits to the farmer. The first one talks about the farm productivity and yield, which is obvious, as we saw, if you were to plant from row to row with along straight lines, it will improve the farm yields. And because of the various facets of less spend in terms of operations and continuity, the costs are also likely to reduce. You're, less, you're going to spend less on herbicides, pesticides, because of not doing the random spraying that you would typically do in fields today. As we saw, the drudgery is reduced. There is improvement of ease and comfort in operations. There is fatigue-free farming, and you don't inhale those gases while spraying. What if you had a situation where you could actually farm 24 by 7, which means night farming, by being at the edge of your farm and using a tab to deliver. Clearly, we are reducing our dependency on available labor, which is in shortage because of migration. And finally, we are mechanizing the entire set of the whole crop cycle, which starts from sowing to growing the crop and reaping the harvest. At the end of it all, let me just showcase what we have presented in form of an AV, which will take us through this journey of the driverless tractor technology. May I have the AV, please? Mahindra Tractors has always been at the forefront of pioneering cutting-edge farm mechanization solutions, opening doors to new possibilities in farming. It is this relentless quest for delivering farm tech prosperity that has led to the evolution of what we term as Farming 3.0. Farming 3.0 aims at ushering a new era of technology and innovation into farming. As a testament to this commitment, Mahindra launches the revolutionary driverless tractor technology. This driverless technology will empower farmers to remotely control tractor operations with just a click on the tab, bringing about a paradigm shift in the way they farm. Some of the path-breaking features include auto steer feature. Powered by GPS, it enables the tractor to travel along a straight path thereby seeding along straight lines or creating straight furrows. Auto head lantern and skip passing features enable the tractor to orient itself along adjacent rows for continuous operation. The tractor is equipped with auto implement lift feature that automatically lifts and lowers the implement from the ground at the end and start of the row respectively. Obstacle detection and avoidance feature enables the tractor to come to a stop when faced with obstacles in the farm, even go around it and continue the farm operations. Coupled with Mahindra's own DigiSense technology, the Geofence lock feature prevents the tractor from going outside the predefined boundaries of the farm. These technology features, along with remote start-stop, can be accessed through a user-friendly interface. Mahindra's driverless tractor is bound to positively change the face of farm operations in India and consequently the lives of the farmers forever. The advent of this driverless tractor technology 
is poised to usher the dawn of a new era in Indian farming, enabling our farmers to rise. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. May I have Dr. Koenka? So we have given you uh, uh, a complete sort of detail of what we have done. Uh, this is today just a technology demonstration. Uh, we will be launching the tractor uh, in phases starting from early 2018. Uh, first will be with the, uh, what do you call it, level one, level one. Uh, which is the uh, driver assist uh, or driver on the seat, uh, followed by the quasi driverless and then complete driverless. So it's going to take some time, but uh, we are more or less ready with the technology. We are doing the testing validation and we'll be launching it soon. I think the important point here, as has been presented by Subo and by Arvind, is that uh, we are bringing this technology right for the Indian farmers, Indian farm sizes, and Indian tractor sizes, which are very different than what you will find in the US and Europe. Uh, and that's what is the crux of what we are doing, to make uh, such technology accessible to our farmers in India uh, and make, it, uh, um, and make the life for the farmer easier in terms of uh, uh, the, the drudgery of farming, uh, get higher productivity, uh, and in fact, in, even in, uh, reduce the input cost. So we'll open up for any questions that you may have uh, before you go and see the demo live in our field here. Anyone? Well, uh, it depends on how you look at cost of ownership because uh, clearly this technology will cost more. Uh, right now, we are still working on refining the cost, uh, uh, so, so initial purchase cost will be more. Uh, and uh, how the cost saving will come is for those farmers that go out and hire a driver, those who don't do their own farming. For them, of course, the, the driver cost will be saved. So it's, uh, it's less of cost saving, it's more of uh, taking drudgery out of farming and in fact getting precision farming. And we're connecting many things that we're doing. So like DigiSense, for example, you saw a uh, mention of that. That came earlier. We're connecting that now to driverless technology. There are more things that will happen in future related to precision farming that will connect to this. So in a way, the farming 3.0 is the umbrella under which we're doing these various things. And uh, coming, bringing these pieces together is what we will hope uh, will make a huge difference in Indian farming. One, one, one at a time. Yeah, available across all the uh, Mahindra products or like have you uh, selected like one or two main products which will be having this? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, the way we are building the technology that it is configurable and adaptable to all our products, essentially all the three platforms which we are having, so we'll be able to scale it up across. Dr. Goenka. Uh, so, so the technology is, uh, technology can be adopted to each of these platforms. Again, uh, it is a new technology. We'll have to wait and watch to see how it gets adopted uh, and uh, slowly uh, ramp it up to various platforms, various parts of the country. There are some parts of the country that may be more amenable to this technology. Some parts may be a little uh, bit slow in adopting it. So it will all sort of evolve with time. Uh, what we have right now is technology ready to go in any tractor that we make in any part of India. Okay. Dr. Goenka Krishan on this side from Bloomberg Quint on your extreme right. Extreme right. right. Yes, there you are. Uh, could you give us a lowdown on uh, what is the sort of investments that have gone into developing this technology, each uh, facet of that, and also is this all in-house, or have you collaborated with somebody else to maybe uh, research on parts of this? It's kind of hard to single out the investment that has gone into this technology, because again, this is part of various things that we're doing together. Uh, and when we launch the tractor, that time we will give you more definitive figure on, on, on investment, because it's still going on. And a lot of investment will happen as we productionize it, because right now what we have is a proto uh, that we have done in, uh, in MRV. So it's premature to talk about that. As far as the work is concerned, uh, we are working with many different uh, technology providers. Uh, some work done here at MRV, and then we are working with technology providers from outside India, in India, uh, and work done at MRV. But right now, we are not at liberty to name who our technology partners are. We'll do that when we launch the tractor. Uh, so, Okay, to a large extent, what we are trying to do, uh, from a technology perspective, it is going to be similar. That whatever you're talking about, auto steer and headland turn and everything. But several features that you're actually putting it in, adapting it for small horsepower tractors and for small farms, is something where we are customizing to our requirements. And also looking at how do you actually put these building blocks together so that the technology can become affordable. 
for the in e So those are the things which you are working on. So at least on the back one, when you see that, which you're talking about the driver on seat hands-free, that will be similar to technology available globally. But as we keep going on increasing the level of autonomy, you will see quite a few stuff which is quite unique for our applications where we'll be trying to have, it, again, it's a philosophy of the design. We have uh, an open architecture which can plug in, but we'll have all the, the key elements which I talked about, the master controller, where the intellectual property will be created and owned by us. So, so with the cost difference approximately? Too early to... Okay. It, it is different. So by just, uh, just uh, repeating uh, kind of what we said, that if you look at the features uh, that uh, Subo talked about, those features you will see in other tractors also. What is unique here is how do you make it available for small farms on small tractors at an affordable price. So that's the innovation that we are doing on how do we bring. In fact, this is the whole area of precision farming that Mahindra has been talking about for quite some time now. Uh, again, the, 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 the objective is the same. Precision farming is available today for... 1,000 plus acres of farm. What we are trying to do is bring it to 20, 30, 40 acre plant, uh, farm, and therefore make the technology available and accessible to Indian farmers. That's, that's the primary difference. And for that, of course, it's not copying technology as is and putting it into a, a tractor. The outcome may be the same, but what goes inside is very different. Right? As far as cost is concerned, these technologies do cost money, uh, especially when you are putting it in, in very small volume to begin with, and with time, the technology cost will come down. So when we launch, we'll talk about what the cost is. Uh, it's again too premature because right now we have not done full productionizing of these things. 30, 40, sorry, last question. Which? Uh, we can do it for across all, the range. all the tractors. Across the range. Uh, so basically three platforms that we have the new platforms, which is the okay. Novo, the Uvo, and the Jivo. On all three, it can go. Uh, we will decide with time which one we launch it on first, and then how do we make it take it forward. Will you, will you be looking at exporting this, or it's only for the Indian market? Okay, so uh, we are actually looking at uh, our traditional markets, export markets, Japan and US. So when our plat platforms go out, so uh, when, uh, based on the requirement in the local market, we actually put it in. But when will you begin to export to Japan and US? That so uh, uh, again, uh, uh, as I said that uh, in my opening, that uh, this is an important part of our globalization, uh, sort of aspirations that we have, <coughs> and all such technology, especially when we take it to smaller farms outside India, becomes very relevant. We will first launch it in India, scale it up a little bit, get some volume, and then only we'll take it globally. Uh, and, and I cannot say right now, as uh, it's, it's premature to give a time frame on when it will be. We'll start from phase-wise launch in India in early part of 2018. We'll take us probably a year, year and a half before we do all of that in India and then take it out. And uh, is, are you working on any electric tractor or anything? The electric is any? The electric tractor? Uh, well, <laughs> we have uh, focused on, uh, on uh, driverless tractor first uh, because we believe that uh, the value to the farmer uh, is much higher from driverless tractor because this is, to us, is a very big need in Indian farming today. Uh, I don't know how many of you uh, uh, have uh, close contact with farmers who do your own farming on your spare time, but you would find that uh, the two biggest problem that farmers talk about today, those who do their own uh, tractor operation, uh, I don't know if you have ever driven a tractor, but if you do, uh, you will realize that it is not as easy or as comfortable as it might look like. I mean, the way it goes up and down and things like even steering and even braking, it's, it's, it's very, very treacherous. The biggest complaint that happens is, look, I get tired, end of the day. So that is one big, big advantage. Second, those who hire drivers, uh, it's very difficult to find drivers now, uh, more and more. Uh, they're becoming very expensive. So we believe that this is more of a need today uh, for Indian farmers than electric. And that's the reason we are focused first on this technology. We are doing work on electric at a very, very sort of early stage right now. Uh, and we have no specific plans on when we will launch electric tractors. Electric, of course, we are focusing on the automotive side. But you're working on electric tractors? Very, very uh, uh, early part. I mean, right now, to, for me to even say that you're working on it is too premature. Our focus is on this. We want to get this out uh, in, the, in, the, in the market, uh, perfect this technology, make it affordable. Uh, and that's where I think the big difference uh, will come in Indian farming. Dr. Goenka, uh, yeah, question. Let, 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 let me just sort of move, move, move this way. Let's, let's finish here. Uh, yeah, uh, after this, next. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, just wanted to understand, while as you were working on this, you must have taken a lot of feedback from any input from cust uh, customers and prospective customers. Uh, how, what were the key uh, inputs? And once you showcased, and uh, what were their response? And uh, 
could throw some light on. And okay. which parts, uh, farmers from which parts of India were more, you do you think are, would be more adoptive to such a... Yeah, I, I think it's, um, it's, it's obvious that while we were doing this, it's, it's a case of having worked with the farmers. So for example, in the potato farms that we uh, spoke about in the presentation, uh, we felt that some of the issues were related to having labor shortages and the inability to actually traverse the tractor along straight lines because it has got subsequent impact in the way you actually put herbicide, pesticide, and you also dig out potatoes on the ridges. And we found wherever we did this, the farmers actually felt that this would have a, have a tremendous impact in terms of the output and also for the protection of the crop. So we got a very good feedback. We worked very closely with grape farmers around Nasik and so on and so forth. And again, in terms of spraying, as I mentioned, each time there is rainfall, the farmer has to protect the crop. And you imagine that this is an exportable item. And even a single blot can mean that the entire crop is rejected. So if you had somebody doing this on a regular basis, and you need to actually do 50 times the same activity in a plot of land which grows grapes. So there is a very big challenge on both these elements, and you get to receive very positive feedback. Based on your initial uh, listing on trialing all these things, what kind of uh, productivity one can yield, uh, maybe a small farmer or a big farmer, and what is the labor cost, or how much labor can say we, maybe one tractor can reduce the labor in, um, in terms of numbers? How can, how can it reduce the labor? Yeah. I didn't follow the question. The number, number of labors can be reduced. Well, uh, I mean, uh, uh, clearly each tractor will reduce one driver. Uh, once we reach to that maturity level. But keep in mind that the first level does not take driver away. The first level is only reducing the uh, drudgery of the driving and does not take the driver away. The second level takes the driver away. So eventually, if you imagine that each of these tractors in India, 100% is running without a driver, which will probably happen 10, 15, 20 years from now, maybe even longer, you're taking away a large number of drivers, right? So, so, so hopefully they will still uh, enjoy the fruit of seeing a driverless tractor and using it, but not having to have the hard work of it. What percent product productivity yield one can expect? What is? Productivity yield, yield percentage. See, a productivity improvement will not come from just one thing. There are a lot of different things that are being done. Uh, some of it we are trying to pioneer in Mahindra. Some of it we are trying to sort of work with other people to do it. But there was a first slide that was shown by Subo. It showed where India was in wheat productivity and rice productivity compared to China, right? And we were at about two-third uh, of, of, of China. Is that right? Two-third yeah. of China? Yeah. Uh, and uh, if I take a global average of all the crops, India will be approximately 30 40% lower than global average. Not the best, just the global average. Uh, and there are many, many, many things that we need to do to bring the productivity up. Uh, and in fact, it's a big opportunity that we have because the Indian land is very fertile. Okay, we get reasonably good uh, irrigation uh, or, or water availability. Uh, but a lot of things that we need to do in precision farming uh, on how to uh, eliminate diseases, for example, that takes away 15, 20% of, uh, of prospective output. How to reduce waste uh, that happens post harvest, that takes away 10, 15, 20% of output. Uh, how to uh, increase, improve the quality of seed. How to do very targeted uh, uh, planting, okay, so that you don't put a uh, uh, lot of uh, nutrients in one area and not put enough in another area and do how, and the precision farming with cameras, with sensors, uh, with soil, uh, soil testing will allow you to do that. So that's all bringing technology into farming. Uh, and what our hope is that with everything that we are trying to do here, with many companies trying to do, we bring it all together, we really would make a huge impact in productivity and that would then go to doubling the farmer's income. So the, the big, big sort of objective the current government has, the government of India has of doubling farmers income by 2022, each of these things will contribute. But there's no one sort of silver bullet. Uh, each of these contribute and eventually we reach that objective. Uh, and to me, doubling farmers income is a very good objective because that requires us to do 100 different things. It's not one thing that you do and suddenly the income is doubled. 100 different things, each one of those will contribute. Okay. So how difficult okay. or easy it is to maintain? Maintain this? this? Yeah. Yeah, these are all pretty much uh, robust technology. Like what I mentioned earlier, many of the building blocks have been there for a decade or two globally. So it's pretty much ruggedized and robust, and it's as good as any of your other electronics and control systems that you're having for mother applications. So they are- Tamil Nadu farmers are affected so much, they are sitting in Delhi. 
How it will uh, go to the Tamil Nadu farmers? How you are thinking? How do we go to Tamil Nadu, Tamil Tamil Nadu, Nadu farmers? farmers? Yeah, so I think... Delhi, for yeah, yeah. so many days they are correct, sitting correct. in Delhi. Um, well, we understand the plight that the Tamil Nadu farmers have undergone because of the lack of rain. The good news is that uh, amongst the states that have received good rainfall this year is Tamil Nadu, and we'll see things really looking up. That's one part of the issue. The other part is the fact that there are row crops that are grown in Tamil Nadu. So, for example, banana is grown in specific parts of Tamil Nadu, and that will certainly be benefited by the advantage that you will have in terms of spraying and other operations that you can do by having this driverless tractor. Uh, Dr. Goenka, I wanted to understand the... Uh, we need to wrap up because I think many of you have to go to uh, another conference. Yeah, I city. wanted to understand the sensing package used in this tractor and how, how do you think, uh, how would this really develop over advanced driver tra uh, driverless tractor technology in the future? Yeah. The pack one, was what I mentioned, it's not a sensing package, it's more of a control package. Okay, and that's so a GPS that you th talked That about. is GPS, yeah. so you have an RTK, that's a real-time kinematics, which essentially have a high position positioning uh, algorithm which is put into the vehicle, along with the auto steer. As we keep going forward, when you're talking about obstacle detection, whether it is optical or camera, that you can actually have that. And then when you talk about obstacle avoidance, so that essentially takes it and links it to the communication platform also. The critical thing when you're talking about the sensor, uh, which I mentioned when you go into the fully driverless or even quasi-driverless, is once you start placing sensors in the farm, when it's collecting data from there, that essentially can drive a lot of decisions of mechanization which goes in there. And that is where essentially the productivity also goes up and also prevention of uh, what Shruva was talking about, the defeat, pest infestation, everything can be seen much ahead of time. Okay, one last question. Do we, uh, see, it, uh, do we see the use of radars, cameras, lidars in the future? It, would that come into the picture as well? It's already been used okay. in, uh, in the mature uh, economies, in, a, in the higher fast power machines. How do you actually bring it? Uh, actually, we are in a good point of time in terms of the technology evolution is <coughs> all the computing power that was available for the spaceships are available on a cell phone now. So with that price coming down and us starting late compared to the Western economies, we can actually crack it in India much faster than what was done in the West. Uh, I sir, think one of the big things in uh, agriculture that uh, yet is not being used in India is use of drones. And use of drones will allow a lot of different things to be happened. Right now, it is not uh, legally permissible yeah. uh, for private companies or uh, farmers to use drone. Uh, but we are working with the government of India, and there's a lot of interest in the government of India to work with companies like Mahindra to see how we can take drone technology to help in uh, uh, improving the farm, uh, the, the farm productivity and uh, basically the crop quality. Last question. Uh, so how educated are you in this technology? And also, is this technology waterproof? Has to be waterproof, to, um, that's for it, sure. It, it, uh, what is the first question? Yeah. Uh, educated. Yeah. Yeah, how is the farmer educated to be able to People operate this technology? I think um, this is a foolproof or an idiot proof kind of a piece. You can actually sit and operate it on your tab as well as on the mobile phone. That's the first part. The second is that if you look at it, we are bringing it in three phases. The first is the one that where the fa it's actually assisted technology. That means you can sit on the tractor and operate it the way you want. And we believe that technology has very interesting adopters, and you're seeing this happen in mobile technologies in the rural market. I think they're adopting very, very fast. Uh, sir, one last question. So is it uh, using conventional CBT transmission or any other automated transmission? In the phase one? We don't have, I did, uh, the auto shift is not there. When it's oh, a constant okay. of pure driverless. So okay. CBT is one of the technologies that are attractive for us, which also evolve. Okay, nice. So what's up, my learning is that we should have all our press conference on MRV. Because when, when they come here, they are technically more sort of uh, stimulated and want to ask all kinds of interesting questions. And it's always very exciting for us to answer these questions than to just talk about capacity and volume plan and market share. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, for being here. We 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 are, we are doing quite a bit in agriculture. I'm personally very excited about about uh, what's happening. Precision farming is a whole subject uh, that uh, we have talked to you once in Mumbai very briefly, uh, and we will talk more about it when we have something very concrete to show. But a lot of stuff going on, and I think the uh, opportunity that is there in Indian farming, because we are at a level where productivity is low, is enormous. And if corporates, government, and farmers can work together, I think we can really create magic. So uh, now I think there's a photo op. There's a photo op uh, since it's very difficult to get photo in front of a running tractor. We are doing it right here, and after that you will go and see the tractor. There is a transportation okay. available for us to actually move from here to the demo situation and then come back for lunch. Please, the buses are available.